Hey everybody, welcome back to Small Talk Japan. I'm back. Welcome back. I'm here. You're here. I did not get shot. Good job. I didn't get COVID. Good job. Probably, because, you know, the, the PCR test that cost me a lot of money. We'll a talk lot about of it money. later. Yeah, that said I was okay. They let me back in the country. I'm surprised they let you back in. Yeah, they let me back like, right this way, sir. <laughs> talk about all that. But first, we got to roll that intro. So yeah, I'm back. So let me tell you, while I was in America, right? Two things that really shocked me. One was the smell of marijuana everywhere. Really? Everywhere. So it's legal in Vegas. In Nevada. Yeah, everywhere. It it's such a specific smell, and it just permeates the entire town now. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, holy crap! Is everybody high? It was just like Jesus. So that's one. And the other thing that really like screwed me up was the cost of things is phenomenally different yeah i i've been looking at uh hawaiian costs because i'm gonna go back soon but what are you doing in hawaii oh you know just hanging out with some people just going back for fun yeah nothing nothing on the the schedule maybe hang out at the beach just completely free the whole time yeah no plans no nothing to stress about nothing nothing. okay yeah okay anyways but yeah it's (laughs) america's expensive well i think especially vegas and hawaii are expensive places so So I, I went back to Vegas, right, to see my mom. So let's just go through this, okay? So I went home. I didn't tell my mom. If you guys don't know this, I have a, let's call it a turbulent relationship with my mother. And uh, I haven't, I didn't talk to her for like two years or three years. I don't know. I just didn't talk. I said, one day I just, I forgot what it was. I think it's when she told me that Trump was a holy man is when I was just like, I just checked out. <laughs> I just... I was like, check, please. I was like, I just don't. I was like, I'm done. And on top of that, she's, she is, I mean, that's her political views, whatever. I mean, she can be, she can have all that. That's fine. The problem with her is that she's obviously, she's got mental illness. It's like, it's like she's 75 years old and she's like slowly deteriorating. And so like, it's really difficult for me to not want to help her because she's living in such a bad situation. And I'm like, hey, since you're a Japanese citizen, why don't you come here? Yeah. And I'll take care of you. But she doesn't want to, it's like, I don't want to get into it, but she doesn't want to do that. And so like, it gets annoying to me that she's like in this self propelling problem state always in need of help. And I'm like, so then like one day, I, I think it was like, she just said to me like, Trump is like a holy man. And like she, and my mom's like weird religious. She's like, she, she used to be, I think she still is a minister, but she hasn't really done anything. She's like retired or something. But like, her religious identity is like her only thing now. Mm. So she's like, I don't listen to anybody but God. And I was like, so the only person that you listen to is the voice in your head. That's good. <laughs> so anyway, so I went home to to say hi and like, hey, I haven't sp- spoken to you in a couple of years and maybe things will b- be better now. And what, what was her reaction when you walked in? You know, my, I talked to one of my brothers before I went home and I, I told him, I was like, I'm coming. And so he went with me to the house, right? And actually he was kind of, yeah, anyway, so, so she, her, he walks in and then I walked in and he thought my mom was going to be like, oh my God, welcome home and see you forever. And I was like, no, mom doesn't think I'm her son. Cause I'm not my mom's son. I'm my mom's ex-husband in her brain. That's what she thinks I am because I raised her children for her. Right. I, I was, I took out all the responsibilities while my, after my father died and she went to work. Right. She full for three jobs. She worked her ass off and she was an amazing mom, um, you know, to me. And then you know, I had to raise her kids and everything. So she kind of got in her brain that I'm not her son, that I'm her, her, like at the time she thought I was her husband. And I remember this one day, I just, cause I, I just told my mom, I was like, cause I don't agree with a lot of things that she does at her house. Um, and the things that she does in the, in the family. And I just told her one day, I was like, I just can't deal with it anymore. I, you, you, I'm not your husband and I don't want to deal with this anymore. I have my own life to live. And I told her, I was like, I divorce you. <laughs> so I divorced my mom. And, uh, anyway, so, uh, so I just, I just don't want to deal with the family and the whole problem of the, of the, of the jika. What do you call it? My, my mom's house, my family's house. I just don't want to deal with any of that crap. There's just so much to go into. I don't, we don't have time. We don't have all the episodes in the world. I couldn't talk about all this, this stuff that happens there. But anyway, so my, my brother, Marshall, he's like the only one that's like sane in Vegas. Uh, he's like, mom's going to be so happy when you come in. I was like, I don't think she's going to be happy. I think she's going to be like annoyed with me. And who do you think was right? You. <laughs> she said, what are you doing here? Mm. That was, that was her hello to me. And I was just like, cool. So this is going to be fun. And it was super fun. It was, uh, it was incredibly productive. I saw her three times and I took her to dinner one time to try to be nice. 
And it took her, I think, maybe 20 minutes of dinner to ask me for money because I don't give my mom money anymore. I used to I used to like financially support her, but I stopped doing that when I said, you can either listen to me <laughs> or, or at least, you know, like consider some of the suggestions I'm making to for your house, mm-hmm. you know, because there's so much chaos in that house mm-hmm. or like, I don't have to be a part of this. I'm not going to support you anymore because I, I don't want to support her, deci- her bad decisions. And she's like, I don't need your money. I was like, OK. And then, and then so instead of it like being just an, an automatic like transfer of funds to her bank account, it's like she would just call me up all the time and ask for cash. <laughs> it's just like, no. So I stopped giving her money. And then so I was home for, I think, like I said, 20 minutes we were at dinner. And she's like, can I have money? I'm like, I'm like, mom, how many of the other boys do you ask for money? Zero. Only me. I'm like, cool. Anyway, so none of that. Anyway, so she wasn't very happy to see me. And um, the, the, the whole thing ended... I was like, try, I was trying to just convince her, like, because I think she's going to sell her house. Because right now in America, like the the real estate market is like in a bubble. So if you, even if you have like the shittiest house in the world, and my mom's house is the shittiest house in the world. I mean, it literally could be condemned any minute. Uh, she's probably going to sell it, so she'll make a lot of money from that. But I have this feeling that she's going to do that, and somehow or another, she's going to be broke and asking for money in less than a year. Mm. I, I, you know, she's just, she's just incredibly good at doing stuff like that. So I, I was, you know, at the last day, cause we had not had very good conversations the entire time that I was there. And I kind of figured I wasn't really going to talk to her after I left again. And so I was just like, Hey mom, so you're going to sell your house. What are you going to do after you sell your house? And she's like, what did she say to me? She's like, I'm going to buy a, uh, what are they called? A mobile home trailer. Was that mm. what they're called? She's like, I'm going to buy a trailer and continue to live in Las Vegas. And I'm like, that's not good. Because, you know, she has, let's just call it a gambling problem. And I was just like, oh, God. And so I was, I remember I was like, hey, you should, you know, this is my last plea to you. I said, you know, my, I'm here. I have a little brother, another, a, a little brother that lives here in Congress with me. I was like, hey, why don't you just, you know, half the year, just half the year. I'll get you your own place, pay your fucking bills, give you some pocket money, just sing karaoke with your friends and just hang out live the retired life. And I think what it is, and I, th- I told you this before, I think what it is, my mom grew up in post-war Japan and she was highly discriminated against because she was half. Right. And I think that when she went to America as a teenager, it felt like a victory for her. Like she's going to go live in the winning country. And so I think that her living in America is like a victory for her. And for her to come back to Japan would be admitting defeat. I think this is like psychologically what's happening with her because it doesn't make any sense to me why mm-hmm. she would come here. And uh, so anyway, I, I was just like, I, I was, gave one last plea. I, again, I was a little annoyed, but I gave one last plea. I was like, hey, mom, just just move back here and and whatever. And she got really angry at me. And then she just stood up and walked away. So I was in my, my childhood living room, right? And then she just like stood up and walked away. And it's like, it's like my last day in, in America. And I just sat there like waiting for like 15 minutes because I thought she was going to come back, but she never came back. So it's very awkward, right? And mm-hmm. it's like, it's not my house either. I mean, I grew up there, but it's not my house anymore. So I'm like, so I'm just sitting there. I'm like, maybe if I go outside, she'll like notice and then like come out. And so I went outside and she didn't come. And I was like, maybe if I go and like start my car, she'll no. So I was just like, this very slow retreat <laughs> was my last day in Vegas. And I just like got in my car and I like on my way home, I was just like, yep, that was weird. I was <laughs> just like, I think we go right back to not talking to that woman. <laughs> this is weird. And then like, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I cannot, I cannot understand that person. But yeah, that was that. But the good thing about my uh, time in Vegas is I got to see my friends from high school. I haven't seen them, you know, three, four years, whatever it's been. And so they're all normal mostly. So that was good. <laughs> but the prices, oh my God. Um, I got, what did I get? I got, like, I went to this place called the Pepper Mill, which is actually a pretty cool restaurant. By the way, nobody is, there's no pandemic in America. It's like, everybody's like unmasked, normal. And I didn't get Rona somehow, okay? So, so anyway, we went to this place called the Pepper Mill. And there's a huge line to get in there. We get in there, me and my little brother, Marshall. And uh, I got, he got sliders. I think that's what they called the little cheeseburgers. Yeah, sliders. Okay, so he got sliders. And then I got like a sampler plate. It's like all fried food. It's all brown. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And it comes with like a a five-gallon bucket of ranch. Because of course it does. Right. And uh, by the way, waitress lady at the pepper mill, you were absolutely beautiful. And I told you you were beautiful. She was, what was she? she? She just looked like. She just looked like a character out of a movie. I don't know. She was just gorgeous. Anyway, I forgot her name, but anyway. She watches our show? <laughs> no, I don't think so, but she was gorgeous. Anyway, um, 
Uh, I don't remember what I was talking about. All right. So, so that, and I think I drank about three drinks and I think Marshall had about two drinks. Let's see. Three drinks, five drinks total and two things of food. Anything else? That's all. I'm going to guess a hundred bucks. $200. $200. $200. Oh my gosh. $200. And I mean, that's with tip, right? It was like 170 plus uh, like a $15 tip or something like that. So it was like $200, right? So now convert that to you. <laughs> that is like... <laughs> Some like, Mongol sense, like, yeah. like 3.5, 3,500, eh, 35,000. I don't know no, numbers it's not in English. That much. It's like 26. What's $200 in Japanese yen? I think it's like 26. Oh, uh, it's like tw- two, two, seven. Yeah, I was close. But still, just think that. <laughs> yeah, that's I, a lot I, of I money. Had three drinks and a fucking st- st- starter plate. Yeah, the same thing at uh, a Kagoshima restaurant would cost 6,000 yen total. No, it wouldn't even cost that. If for this price, okay, for two, two points, uh, 27 thousand yen yeah. you can get lobster and steak yeah and no mihodai all you can drink for yeah. two hours yeah okay and i was just like i don't know how much money because I, I i don't i don't want to open my credit card. oh one thing i do love about you america i didn't take a single dollar out of an atm oh everything's I did, cashless i did the whole trip on my card and like I haven't opened my credit card statement yet because I don't want. I don't need the stress yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure it's a lot. And and I didn't really party. I just like like so survived. That's all I really did. I didn't really party, and it was like so expensive. Yeah, you sent me some of your pictures, and I was expecting like some party pictures. You're like, I ate some Mexican food. Guess how much it costs? <laughs> well, no, I did do some fun things. Okay, so one, I went to uh, Meow Wolf in Vegas, which is where uh, the Omega Mart is. If you guys, oh, if you guys haven't seen these, go Google on YouTube Omega Mart. They have the best commercials. They're like surrealistic and everything. Anyway, it's like an actual uh, supermarket, and it has quests and shit, and it takes you four hours to do it. Apparently, I didn't do it because I wanted to do it with a friend. I spent the whole time alone. So that was the other thing that was kind of shitty about this trip because. Because I didn't tell anybody I was going there, one. And everybody else is, like, normally working and right. doing shit, right? So, like, I basically was most of the time by myself. And so I went to Meow Wolf by myself, and I was just like, I was like, oh, this would be so much fun with a friend. And so I thought I'd go back there. But then I did go back there that night with my friend randomly because he's like, oh, you went to Meow Wolf? Did you drink there? I was like, no, you can drink there. He's like, yeah, there's a bar that you get in, and it, like, goes up in the air. And we did that. It was stupid expensive. <laughs> and it was really dumb, by the way. Like, I don't recommend that at all. <laughs> But what was cool is there was a, one of the bars there. They have like three bars in this one place, okay? <laughs> one of the bars there was a, a, a arcade bar, and that was fun. That's um, cool. Yeah. And I don't know. I didn't really, didn't really party or do anything crazy. Uh, just basic seeing friends, just hanging out, deciding that my mom is not worth my time. <laughs> I don't mean that. I, like, I, I want to go back. I, wanna, I don't want to seem like a monster. I actually really, really do care about my mom. That's why I, it's hard for me to talk to her. Um, and I also knew her when she was in her forties at her prime and she was very amazing person, just smart, just work, workaholic, like amazing. And then that person became this person and I don't like this person compared to that person. And so it's difficult for me to talk to that person. That's all. But the one thing that I did enjoy is that when we were fighting, at least we were fighting in Japanese this time. So that was good. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. So we were fighting in Japanese. <laughs> uh, anyway uh but yeah well, well here i want to do i want to talk about one more thing so let's talk about the experience of coming by so so america changed the law they said you don't need a pcr test to land in america six hours before i landed so right. i actually didn't need to take my pcr test in japan right but i had already yo yaku that i had already reserved and paid for it mm-hmm. so i yeah, might as well take it so i took it right so that was that was Sama yen in in so that's what thirty thousand yen right in in Tokyo, and I had to go to Tokyo the day before my fight because I had to do this in Tokyo and then wait six twelve hours or something like that. So it was just messy. Okay, so that's one. Then I didn't need that. So I, landing in America was hilarious. It was like I think Alex said when he got to England it was the same thing. They were just like this dude was sitting like if you guys are just listening to this, I'm I'm super laid back in my chair right now. He's like he was like this. And he's like, passport. He's got tats all on his arm and everything. And he's like, passport. And I give it to him. And he just like waves me in with his fingers. Doesn't even talk to me. He was such a dick. Anyway, so that was that was fun. And then like, that was it. It was just like, whatever. We don't give a shit. It's like, do whatever you want. And so that was getting into America. And then also leaving Japan was creepy as fuck. Because yeah, we went to, first of all, I had to go to Narita, which is the worst airport. 
Narita sucks balls. Have you ever been there? Yeah, I have. It is the worst. Not only is guys, Narita is not Tokyo. It's in Chiba. It's fucking hours away. It takes 3,000 yen to get there from, from Shibuya, which is stupid. And once you get out there, the only thing there is Narita. <laughs> and it's a shit airport. I don't know how they made such a shitty airport when they had like, uh, I think it's all the warring and fighting and shit that they had to do with the farmers. But anyway, so it's all international flights that are basically leaving out Narita because who the fuck would take a domestic flight from, from Narita? And so in the international terminal, like I did this, I went like this, I looked this way and I looked this way and I saw no humans anywhere. It was a fucking ghost town. We got inside the terminal, right? And like, I, I, I went there really early because I, I was afraid like, you know, with pandemic travel restrictions, everything I thought was going to be difficult, but get into the terminal. And once you're in the terminal, you're immigrated out of the country. So you can't come back it through security. It's like, you're there. You just, oh, okay. you got to wait for your flight. Um, and so I, I got in the terminal. No one told me this. All the shops in the terminal are closed. They're oh. permanently closed. So like there weren't, any no services, or nothing, anything, nothing. So what did I do? Got me like a canned coffee from the Jihanki and was playing my switch. That's what I was doing in the fucking terminal, looking at this closed bar, thinking like if this thing was open, I would be having a beer right now. Yeah. Sucked. Totally sucked. Anyway, so got on the flight. Flight was not bad. I, I said this on the radio, but I'll say this again for our audience here, international audience. They enforced Japan Airlines. I didn't say this on the radio show, but I'll say it here. Japan Airlines enforces masks in the most hilarious fucking way in the world. Uh, yeah. It's so Japanese. They, they, so I was on a flight with mixed, you know, Japanese people and other people from other countries and everything. And there's just one dude, let's call him entitled American. He was like, I'm not wearing my mask on the flight, even though they tell you. I mean, it's their airplane. They say wear a fucking mask. You wear your fucking mask, right? Yeah. Like, stop fighting about it. It's not a political statement. Anyway, so they probably dealt with this already. So they have the cutest way of enforcing masks. This cabin attendant, Japanese lady, has an iPad that it says in English, please wear a mask with a picture of a mask and a person putting it on. Yeah. And the, the cabin attendant will just literally stand in front of you holding that in front of you until you comply. That's so awkward. It's so awkward. <laughs> and this dude was like ignoring her at first he's like no i'm protesting this i'm not gonna wear my mask but it 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 he they, she just wouldn't and she's you know friendly and a smile well i'm, I'm guessing a smile she's wearing, she a, mask, was wearing a mask <laughs> but i'm guessing a smile and then she's just sitting there and and she, it, she just kept waiting and waiting and eventually the dude because everybody's looking at him right it's embarrassing as fuck right it's yeah. like the whole plane's looking at him eventually the dude's like fuck and he puts on his mask and i was like okay japan airlines that's not bad I mean, we didn't have to deep plane. Nobody got arrested. I was like, okay. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of like horror story videos of uh, American flights and it seems pretty crazy in America right now. You know, don't do that, guys. If you get on the don't fly list, that's not fun. Yeah. You want to drive for the rest of your life? <laughs> I mean, seriously, think about it. Think, you just think about that for a second. If you misbehave in an airplane, they put you on a blacklist where you don't fly anything unless you're rich enough to get your own plane, in which case, why are you misbehaving on an airplane? Right? It's just so dumb. It's like long-term thinking. It's just yeah. not, that's not big brain moves there. Yeah. Right? Anyway, so coming back to the country. Ah, so before I come back to Japan, you have to do a lot of stupid things. You have to get a PCR test, which there are basically none available in America anymore because they're, they're like, fuck it. Yeah. Everybody does like home tests and shit like that. So, and so I was the only reservation at this drive-in clinic. Drive-in? And they're only drive-in. So if you don't have a car, you can't even go. Can you go on like a bicycle or something? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I go to this drive-in clinic and like I had a, I put a, uh, a reservation online and everything. I get there at my reservation time and nobody comes out. I'm thinking like, do I go to the door? But it says stay in your car. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, what do I do? And then uh, I got to, what happened? I, I, I just waited and I honked once and the lady came out. She's like, Oh, I didn't know that we had a reservation today. <laughs> and this girl, she was super, I think she, she was like, I don't know, some sort of Asian American. And she was just like, she just looked like a character from like an anime. And she just came out and she was like, she was like in her hazmat suit and everything. <laughs> and she's like, hi, do you, have you done this before? And I was just like, wow, that's a lot of excitement to do. What, what, what do you, what do we do? She's like, she's like, okay, so you do that. And she's like explaining the whole thing to me. And I was just like, it's just, anyway, she, good service at that. She was probably like, you're the first person I've seen in days. <laughs> no, really. That's, I think she, maybe. Anyway, so did that, and then it came to me in a mail that I was like uh, negative. So then, so I have to take all that information, put it into this app, 
And this app has a, it's colored red when you start the app. That okay. everything's red. And like once you submit everything, it turns, it goes, it stays red. And then it has to like think, uh, it has to run your vaccination status. Okay. And if you get three va- uh, vaccina- vaccines like I did, three shots, then it, pu- it pushes you to yellow. Okay. And yellow equals, I think, don't quote me on this, guys, but I think it's like stop at the airport. So it's like further things are necessary at the airport. Right. After yellow is, is green, which means that they, everything's cleared, but they need to check your vac- uh, PCR status. So you have to show them it. Okay. And then the, the best color is blue. Blue is like just right this way. And how do you how do you get that? Like, what's the difference between? You just have to submit everything, and then some guy in an office somewhere has to look at it and then update it. See, so that's why you do it before you come to the country. Okay. Anyway, so like, two things were really hilarious. One, I didn't, I wasn't listening to what they were saying when we landed because I was playing my Switch and I had earbuds in, mm-hmm. and like some people were deplaning, but not everybody. And I was just like, hmm, maybe I should pay attention. So then, like, I kind of like got everything ready to go, and. Then I asked the, the the cabinet attendant, I was like, excuse me, because they were all really excited that I could speak Japanese. And I was like, excuse me, like, what, what's going on? And they're like, oh, it's just, you know, this is for all the people who are immigrating at, at Narita. If you have a connecting flight, because a lot of these people are connecting to other countries or connecting to other places in, in Japan. Right. If you have a connecting flight, then you, you, we stay on the, on the airplane. And I was like, oh, well, I'm immigrating now should i and they like rushed me off the plane and i was like the last person of 25 that got off the plane and like they had this team of people like the corona team at the end of the skywalk and they're like they were shutting down closing up shop and i was like being rushed over to them and then all they did i don't know what the fuck all these people were for but like they looked at my phone it's blue they gave me a blue piece of paper which i think indicates that i have a blue app i don't know and then that was it and they're like, enjoy Japan. And the 25 of us went to immigration, which they had full officers because, you know, they need employment, right? So there's like 40 lines available and there's 25 of us. We got processed and went through customs, I think, in three minutes, which is the fastest that's ever happened. And then I was on a train and they were like, have fun. That was it. I was expecting like, uh, you know, in Monsters, Inc., when yeah. they had the sock on the guy's back and then they had like had no. the whole hazmat team. No, nothing. But then again, guys, this is for resident. I'm a resident, a permanent resident. So if you're a tourist, well, y- you'll know this because you'll have to stay in your group. You have right. to have a tour guide. You have to have a babysitter right now. But, uh, but yeah, it was really easy. And I was just like, and then like minutes, minutes later, I was in a bar getting drunk with my friends. I was like, hey, everybody just got off the plane. Nice. And that was it. Yeah, that was my trip. And so, and all of that, and I didn't really have that much fun cost me i don't know probably around ten thousand dollars was great that's like that's more than the estimate for my wedding for like you mean the thing that you're not doing in hawaii oh yeah the thing i'm not doing in hawaii 20 30 ish people's worth of food and everything too so let me tell you one more thing and anybody that's listening from america you know this uh, I had a rental car, right? And like, so I went to Alamo. Fucking love you guys, Alamo. You guys are great. Went to Alamo and they're like, they're like, and I rented like, I don't know, midsize, something, something, equivalent, something, something. And I got there and the dude, like I walked up and I was getting my, my, my keys from the guy I was getting my car. And this dude at the Alamo, he was so fucking jacked. I was like, you are way too, I love being back home where I could say stupid things to people. And it's funny because like, you can't really do that here. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, dude, you are way too jacked to be working here. And he's like, thanks buddy. Ha ha ha. And shit like that. Right. <laughs> anyway. So like, he's like finding me a car and he's like, Hey, you want a truck? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'll take a truck. And so I got this giant Chevy, Chevy truck. Maybe it was Chevrolet. I don't know. The, I don't know the difference. But anyway, it was this giant Chevy truck that like, I had to fall out of. Did I send you the picture of it? Yeah. I'll, I guess I'll put it in. Can I put it in? Yeah. The podcast? Okay, I'll put, put it in, in the podcast. Fine. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so like giant Chevy truck that like literally like I had to fall out of every time I got out of it. It's so tall. And like every time I parked this fucking thing, like I had no idea where the truck ended. Like every time I parked it, I had to like get out and walk around. I'm like, damn it. I am nowhere <laughs> where I thought I was. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, so that was fun driving that thing around. And then when I went to, I, don't, I used half a tank of gas because I didn't really travel, and I just was in the city. And uh, and I when I went to go fill it up, it was half a tank of gas. Okay, how much do you think? Well, I have no idea what gas prices are in America right now. I'm gonna guess like fifty bucks, maybe almost seventy dollars. Seventy dollars, damn, almost seventy dollars. That's expensive. That's half a tank. 
Oh yeah, that's, that's expensive. That's half a tank. And I was just like, wow. By the way, guys, if you're at home and you're wondering how, why gas prices are so high, I totally recommend the YouTuber Climate Town. He's got a great video that explains why gas prices are so high. And you know what? It's incredibly surprising and shocking to no one who's smart. It's not actually Biden who decides the fucking gas prices of the world. But anyway. <laughs> Anyway, that was my story about going to America and coming back to Japan. Oh, and I uh, I just wanted to say one thing. I got back to Japan and I got off the plane and I went to an izakaya and I met my friends from Kagoshima there. And I just, I don't know. Maybe it's not, I don't know if I hate America. I don't want to say I hate America, but I definitely hate Vegas. I definitely hate my fucking mom's house. And so I don't know what it is when I got back here. I just went, and it was just like, so happy to be here like i spent four or five days in tokyo and i was just like every day i was just like i love living i just love coming back here i just i kind of needed that i kind of needed a kick in the ass a little bit and so it was like just totally awesome to come back here and i randomly found two things in tokyo if you guys are there one which was i completely forgot the name the best cheeseburger i've had in a long time which uh, I sent Josh a picture of that, but it was this place in Shibuya called Blue Star Burger. So if you put that in the podcast. And then another thing that I haven't sent Josh, he'll see this for the first time, is this, I went, I randomly went to an izakaya. Oh, wait, I don't think I can play this song because of the, maybe copyright, but I I went to, I went to an izakaya. Two things, what were interesting about this, Teppanyaki san One, the manager's name was Michi, which is my Japanese name. So that was weird. And two, randomly, they just started a song and dance. <laughs> you know, in, in Japan, a lot of the, the staff will do like, you know, birthday. If it's a birthday, they'll, they'll like do candles or something special for them. They'll turn off the lights, turn on right. some music or something. In this place, they do a whole song and dance with the whole crew. You got to put this in the, in the video podcast. And then at the end of it, at, at Japanese weddings, there's a scene where the, where the wife, because basically the, the idea in the Japanese weddings is that the, the husband is taking the wife from the parents of the wife. And so like, there's this letter scene mm. where the wife like reads a letter to her parents, thanking them for everything. Yeah. That's where you cry. Cause you're, you're lame, but everybody is, everybody's like sniffling and the, the wife is always like fucking crying and everything. And I'm like, come on. Anyway, but so that's like a thing and everybody knows that scene from the weddings this place kind of made a a parody of that where instead of the wife reading to the to the uh to the to the parents it's the staff reads to the birthday person the things that they should be thankful for (laughs) to their parents okay (laughs) and it's hilarious i think they say the same things for everybody but it was just it was so hilarious but anyway, yeah. So that that was a thing. And I went there and I just randomly found that place. And then uh, the guy who sat next to me, because it was counter seating. Right. The guy that was sat next to me, uh, he his he was from Miyazaki, which is right in here next to Kagoshima and Kyushu. And so we were like hanging out Kyushu buddies. It was cool. I mean, like the whole the whole the whole time in Tokyo was just great. I just I enjoyed every moment. But I, I was happy to come back to Kagoshima. I was just like finally got home. Uh, you always say that you don't like Tokyo too. This time I stayed specifically in Shibuya the whole time and liked it for the first time. And I didn't leave Shibuya. And I was just like, no, fuck you guys. I'm not leaving Shibuya. The one time I left Shibuya was to see uh, my friends uh, that, used, that graduated from Sofia. But we, I think, where did we go? Uh, we went to Nichum. It went to Gay Place. That was fun. <laughs> Okay. That, that, that actually was super fun. I enjoyed my time in Nichome. If you guys ever have a chance to go to Nichome, it's where all the gay r- bars are. It was a blast. It was really, really fun. And uh, I found a Japanese guy uh, at one of the bars, and he had lived in New York for 15 years. And I swear to God, if, if you close your eyes while talking to him, he sounds just like Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> no, I was like, I kept calling him Jerry. And I was just like, dude. And it was cool. Anyway. We got news. Let's get to the news. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh, I got a, I got a travel story. Let's do the travel story. Did I give that to you or did I do it? Oh, here we go. Let's do the travel story. So we're just talking about travel. Okay. More than 1,300 people have applied to travel to Japan on guided tours since the country restarted visa procedures to accept some leisure visitors from abroad a week ago as worries about COVID-19 pandemics wane. Uh, tour participants to Japan. We said this last week, or you guys said this. Last- oh, comment. 
yeah show last week yeah one i didn't get fat in america i actually lost one kilogram thank you very much because um you know <laughs> everything was so expensive no because it was just deathly hot i hadn't been back to a vegas summer in 12 years oh my god never doing that again um no but you you and alex's show how did you feel about you and alex did you you watched it right afterwards? uh well i mean i had to edit through it how did you feel about you and alex's show eh, it wasn't the best show <laughs> it was all right it was a little <laughs> A little tame, I thought. A little... You guys are like, I don't know. I, I I liked it. I was like, this is fun. I think when uh, it's you and Alex, Alex gets a little vulgar and likes to be funny. Yeah. But with me, he he kind of has that like older brother feel. <laughs> so he's like, I have to show him how to act properly. It was anyway. Yeah, tame. That's a good word for it. I was just like, Very I was just like, wow. What you guys do, you? It was fun. Yeah. Uh, who who picked the news stories for I, last I week? I did. Okay. You think Alex is going to pick the news stories? No, Alex does absolutely no prep for this show. Him and Natsuki are the two who like, do absolutely nothing. They just show up. <laughs> I think I, I put some articles in front of him. I was like, all right, uh, if you could read through these, like, yeah, I'll read it when we get to that article. Yeah, like, <laughs> you're supposed to read the fucking articles before the show. Like, I, I make notes and everything and write on them and everything. And Alex was just like, I'll just do it live. I'm like, yeah. Okay, so I, I I only give him like the easy topics, the stuff that doesn't have to be that deep. Anyway, so what do you think about one thousand three hundred people? That's not a lot of people. Yeah, it's not enough people to really kickstart the tourism industry in Japan no. again. So no, I mean I I know they're being cautious for now, but I'm hoping it's like a an exponential growth from here, not like a an additive. When do you think that they're just gonna be like fuck it, do whatever you want? Uh. A year after America. <laughs> well, America said fuck it, do whatever you want two weeks ago. Yeah, so it'll be about summer <laughs> 2023. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I think that uh, I don't know. They they got to stop doing that. I mean, like, there's so many industries in this country that just will absolutely evaporate if they don't. Because, like, you know, we got the whole joking. What is that in English? Subsidy grants government aid i don't know whatever right and like so a lot of people are existing from that but that's not forever and we can't keep printing money oh let's talk about that let's talk about printing money yen falls to 136 lowest in 24 years <laughs> that hurt in america yeah can it not do that please <laughs> so there's two things that suck about this i mean there's a lot of things that suck about this but one obviously my trip yep and two, I want to buy some shit that's usually priced in American dollars and it's not really fun to buy that stuff right now. Right. Like for the uh, production side, uh, uh, production company, I want to buy a camera and that camera is stupidly uh, region locked. Yeah. Stupidly, stupidly Sony. Yeah. This is actually something I wanted to talk about Uh because I think back in the day, Japan was kind of known as the like haven for cameras. Like you could come to Japan and get high quality cameras for cheap. But then they started region locking cameras so that like all the cameras made in Japan have the Japanese language option. And then other uh, cameras from other cheap like that make it for cheaper, they don't have the Japanese language option. And I guess that was like a, a reason for that was to help Japanese economy. Okay. But they just made it like way more expensive in Japan too. Like even getting the Japanese version of cameras is more expensive than getting, uh, what do you call it? Like an international version from another country, even with like the yen difference. So <clears throat> there's that. And the cameras in Japan only have Japanese. There's yeah. no English uh, uh, option. No Chinese, nothing. <clears throat> this is specifically for Sony. And uh, so they region lock their cameras by doing this. And so the ones that you get in North America have English. Right. But then Sony tells like B&H photo and stuff like yeah. that. Don't ship them to Japan. Yeah. I spent a long time. Like when you messaged me a couple days ago, I've been looking at all these sites and every single one was like, does not ship to Japan. Does not ship to Japan. Does not ship to Japan. Like, that's just hurting Japan more than anything. It, it's just, it's dumb. Like, Sony, you're dumb sometimes. I swear. You and your propriety bullshit. You do make a good camera. That's why we're going to go into your silly little ecosystem. But 
Yeah, that's just dumb. Anyway, so that's one big buy that we want to make. And then the second thing is uh, because for two years, we haven't been able to buy graphics cards. Mm -hmm. Graphics cards are basically priced in the dollar range. So even though that the graphics cards have come down significantly, they're below MSRP in America right now. They are still really expensive here. Right. And so the reason why we need graphics cards is because we're going to game. No, we need to buy, we need to build uh, editing rigs. And because a gaming rig and an editing rig is the same thing. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that's a, it's just so expensive. But anyway, so it, uh, we, yeah, we are at 136, which is crazy. I really hope it starts dropping soon because dropping like, you mean going back well, well whatever. I, I mean the you know what i mean right going in the reverse direction of what it's doing now yeah because like what do you call it as things stand now my wedding should be cheaper than like a japanese wedding but just because the yen is so weak having to convert it to dollars it's gonna be like way too expensive so going along these lines i have a related story so japan's famed hyakken shoppers like so we have these hyakken hyakken it's like hyaku is a hundred and keen i think is gold so it's like hyakken i guess is what they call it i don't know anyway we have these we have daiso and daiso is a hundred yen shop think of it as a dollar shop a dollar store that doesn't suck yeah, I, I talked about that with my adult students this week. Daiso is fucking godsend. It's got everything. I Actually, I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, if there, if there wasn't Daiso, there are so many things that I don't know where to buy them, <laughs> if not from there. That's true. Like anything that's like paper, pen, like scissors, rulers, folders, anything like that is all Daiso. Where would you buy that? Amazon? Well, they do have like paper shops in Japan, I guess, but it's Everything. like expensive there. Everything's a Daiso and everything's a hundred yen, which we just discussed is like, I don't know, 70 cents or something. Yeah. And so, uh, so because of the weak yen, because a lot of Daiso products are, they're, they're so cute. It's like when Apple says designed in California, made in China. Yeah. You know, but they make the design in California yeah. super big. But anyway, Daiso is so cute. They say made for Japan. Made for Japan. <laughs> made in China. Well, it, actually, Daiso is weird. They have stuff that's made in China, made in uh, Vietnam, uh, all the different little countries. Some of it is actually made in Japan as well. But anyway, because of the weak yen, they can't get materials or just plain old stuff. So, like, they, the, according to this article, the, some uh, hyakin, some 100 yen shops are actually raising their prices to 150 or 200 yen. Mm, I mean, nowadays there are a lot of things in Daiso that are like 300 yen, 500 yen, and stuff like that. One time I was in Daiso and there was a full on whiteboard, like a giant whiteboard, and it was like 7,800 yen. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so <laughs> random. <laughs> <laughs> why did they decide to sell it at daiso i don't know <laughs> whatever but yeah daiso is really great but the one one thing i do want to complain about daiso a little bit here we can't we can't just you know say everything's good but like uh the daiso some products in, in daiso are so shitty quality that they <clears throat> some most of them are great but some are so shitty quality that they're just basically adding to the plastic mm, problem you know yeah. And so, uh, I yeah, that stuff should should go away. I when I was living in Osaka, I bought a uh, tamagoyaki fry pan. From, <laughs> don't from, don't do that. From a Daiso, and I was like, oh, I'm excited to make some tamagoyaki. I put it on the burner, and the fry pan started smoking like like really really bad. Did like, it say like it's not for intended use as a tamagoyaki I, fry I pan? I mean, at that time, I couldn't really read Japanese very well, but like. It seriously like almost caught fire. So I was like, what the hell happened? Like, I don't know what I did wrong. So I don't. This kid went to cooking school, guys. I Well, that was before cooking school. Okay. That, is that why you went to cooking school? <laughs> I yeah. No, I didn't have money back then. <laughs> uh, I don't know why this just popped into my head, but I do this. I have another story that I want to talk about. When I was in Narita, I went to the toilet. I always talk about toilet stuff. I don't know why. I went to the toilet and there was like this. I'll, I'll send you these photos. So timestamp this and put this in the, in the thing. But like I went to the toilet and I was just, this is one of the things that just made me think I just love, I just love Japan. And um, in the toilet, it has like, this toilet is maintained by this person that like has their name on a little no, card. I thought you were going to say picture. What? No, no, no. <laughs> it has her name on a little card. And then it's like, if there's a problem with the cleanliness of this toilet, please call. And it's like a number. Is it this thing? Oh, yeah. I sent it to you already yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Sense. So, yeah. That's so cool. I was like, wow. That's cool. And everybody thought it was weird for taking a picture of that card. 
in the toilet. It's probably illegal to take pictures in it. Oh, another story. iPhones in Japan have to have the shutter sound because basically all the the smartphone makers don't want there to be a law limiting, like making it so they have to have a shutter sound. So they all have like a gentleman's agreement to just have a shutter sound. So all phones and all cameras have a shutter sound. And this is to prevent up skirt, skirts and stuff like that. They used to be like rampant, I guess, back in the day. But if you take a photo with the, the live photo. It still goes. Ko-king. Yeah, it does. But it's like a second after. So you can like take a photo and then turn away. What are you trying to be a perv or something? Pro, pro tips. For- pro tips. <laughs> <laughs> Not pro tips. <laughs> Anyways, uh, on the subject of Narita. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. So I just said the story. So, so oh. shutter, shutter, right? Oh yeah. Shutter. Shutter, right? I get off the plane in America and I'm taking all these photos and everything. I was like, why aren't you making a shutter sound? And I just like realized that like my phone knew it was in America. I was just like, don't need to do a shutter anymore. Really? So I just didn't do a shutter. And I, I have a techie friend. We, we, we have a programmer. Love him. I like messaged him up. I was like, my phone is not making a shutter sound in America anymore. He's like, yeah, once it leaves Japan, it just stops doing that. What about phones that are like for America that are brought to Japan? No, they don't make a shutter sound. That's weird. So yeah, for whatever reason, my Japanese iPhone, well, I mean, Jap- my iPhone that was I bought in Japan Made just for Japan. Made for Japan. Which, yeah. yeah, made for Japan. Yeah. <laughs> was just like no shutter sound once I got into America. It was it was oh, it was wow. so great to not have a shutter sound. It was nice. What, what were you taking pictures of? No, no, no. Just because you know <laughs> when you whenever you take a picture in Japan, people look at you. Yeah. But in America, I was just taking it because you know I was I was I was being a tourist. I was kind of being an idiot while I was there. It was like you know oh I'm in Vegas, and so I was just taking shot pictures of everything, and it was just like no one would look at me. Hmm. It was great. But anyway, that was so weird. Thanks, America. Thanks, America. <laughs> what were you going to say? Something about Narita? Anyways, Revenge of the Turtles. Oh, dude, yeah. So we uh, talked about this on an episode. It's been a while, probably like 50 episodes ago or something like that, I think. How many episodes are we on right now? 120-something? We No, we're on, I think, 154. So we're about three years in. Why do you guys like us? I don't even I'm like not, him. I'm not sure if they do like us. Maybe they, <laughs> maybe they just like haters. So they're yeah. fucking that bitch kid. <laughs> Uh, anyway, sorry. So yeah, so yeah, we had this kind of like this. We we introduced this con this problem. Yeah. So in that story, about a year ago, I think uh, a turtle had made its way onto the runway and basically held a bunch of planes hostage at the shittiest fucking airport in the world. Fuck you, Narita. Uh, but now, 144 turtles removed from Narita Airport since April to prevent accidents. So, uh. I guess there are just a bunch of <laughs> reptiles and turtles that stray onto the runway in Narita for whatever reason, and they have 144 traps set uh, because apparently if a jet engine were to suck in a turtle, it could cause an accident. And there have been a total of 11 cases where turtles have uh, intruded the runway and hijacked planes, apparently. That's crazy. How, a, how, are there, a, how are the turtles getting in? It's such a cute problem. It's such a cute problem. I love turtles. Um, they, oh, I saw something on Facebook today. This dude is like, like, one of my friends walked into a store. I think this was in Texas. And there's like a desert tortoise, like just walking around freely. And apparently when the store owner goes, do you want some appies? Some appies? Like <laughs> apple slices. He calls them appies. Yeah. Like the, the tortoise, the tortoise will come over and get his appies. And then my friend mentioned to the owner who's like, the owner is 27 and the, the tortoise is 30. <laughs> my friend had mentioned to the owner he's like yeah you know he's gonna really remember you when you're dead because oh. the tortoises live for like 150 years yeah and when you think about that it's like that's kind of funny the tortoise is older than him he's gonna outlive him but anyway why am i talking about that no no so getting back to narita yeah that's a thing like with birds what's it called bird something bird shot or something like that there's there's a word for that where like the plane when the plane is taking off and a bird gets into the engine right and this is this is taken down planes before. It's dangerous. Yeah. So some airports actually have like like they have sounds or like this like methods of getting rid of dispersing birds. Okay. So it's a problem. But I've never heard about the tort- turtles before. Yeah. I didn't even know there were tor- tor- turtles in Japan. Yeah, that I uh, man, I, I bet a turtle would deal some serious damage to an engine if if a bird can mess up an engine turtle would like blow it out 
Yeah. Um, can I just talk about being on the plane for a second? So I, uh, so I, I was, I was okay. So eight hours felt like nothing when I was playing Zelda on the plane. It was great. Did you beat it yet? No, I don't want to beat it. Once I beat it, I have nothing to do anymore and I'm going to drink more. That's not good for my liver. Okay. So anyway, so I I guess I got to tell you guys this. Oh, I got to tell you another story. Anyway, so I'm sitting there in the plane and I'm like playing the, the switch, but the, the switch is the, what are they called? Joy cons that attach to the side. Mm-hmm. That's impossible. I don't know. You have to be a, like a miniature human to use those. <laughs> like they are so small. I mean, it is designed for Japanese children. So yeah, that's exactly what they are. Okay. So I, I was using your pro controller that I t- stole from you three years ago and just never gave it back to you. And I think you stole it from your dad. Uh, it was gifted to me, whatever thieves, all of us. And so, um, so I have the tray down in front of me and I have the switch and I bought a specific little carrying case that has a kickstand thing. So you can just like put it in there. Right. And so I'm charging it cause there's like plugs in the plane. So I'm charging it and I'm like playing on the pro, con- the pro uh, controller. controller, but like, I don't know. I cannot play Zelda. I mean, I did, but I, I don't want to ever play that game on the switch's screen. The switch's screen is shit because I've been playing on a giant OLED for mm. you know a huge 4K screen. It doesn't, it's not 4K, but you know. And so like, I've been playing it on a beautiful screen and then I was like forced to play it on that little shitty screen. I was like, I hate this, but then I got used to it because it was the only option I had, but yeah. All right. Have you ever played your Switch on the Switch's screen? I don't think I have. Yeah. Yeah, I've only ever played on the TV. The UI on Zelda is so like specific and small. I was like, I for parts of it, I was just like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, <laughs> but anyway, it was it was it was good to have that game and something to do on the plane. And then my other my other thing is my American Airlines because JAL don't ever don't ever get like connecting flights through JAL because they use American Airlines in America and American all any American based airline is garbage. Mm. They're all flat out garbage except for Southwest. I like Southwest a little bit. But they're all mostly garbage. And so anyway, American Airlines like emails me the day before I'm supposed to leave at five o'clock in the morning. They're like, oh, by the way, your flight is canceled. What? Yeah. And then I like call up JAL because it was their connecting flight there. They subcontracted American Airlines. Right? So I call them. They don't even fucking pick up the phone in America. And then when I did get somebody to pick up the phone, I don't know where this person was from, but they were not native English speaking. And then anyway, since I booked through HIS, the travel agency, they, they're like, call them. Anyway, all that stupidity, it took me hours of being on the phone to just figure out that I was in insurance, travel insurance. So insurance will just cover me buying another airplane ticket. Oh, okay. So I just bought another, but there was only one seat available because I had to get my Japanese, uh, my, I had to connect. It's the whole spoke hub and spoke thing, right? So I had to connect to LAX and then the big flight was from LAX. So I just needed to get there before the big flight took off. Okay. The only available flight from, from uh, Las Vegas to LAX was a first class ticket. But since it's being covered by insurance, I just got it. So I flew first class. It's not the first time in my life, but for the first time in a long time yeah for 55 minutes nice of my like 24 four hour trip did you get champagne <laughs> no because it was like like i said it was like ass in the morning after i, I think i was already hung over as well and i was just like no and all the hoity-doity people in like first class they're like oh what do you do i'm like don't talk to me <laughs> i don't belong here <laughs> but yeah that was that was that was fun anyway you do a story uh on the topic of money, Japanese whiskey fetches $600,000 in New York auction. Okay. So a bottle of Japanese whiskey uh, fetched $600,000. It was the Yamazaki 55 single malt whiskey by Suntory Spirits uh, sold by Sotheby's. I'm not sure what that is on Friday. Uh, $600,000. And apparently... The price was one hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollars higher than they expected. So they expected it to be at least four hundred thousand dollars for a bottle of whiskey. Anyways, the I guess the uh, the whiskey made only like a limited number of bottles in twenty twenty for twenty two thousand dollars each. So if you bought one of those bottles of whiskey, you could have sold it for like thirty times the price. Why is it so expensive? I mean, Yamazaki is a good brand, but I guess, I guess it's like collector's item or something. 
I guess so. I mean, for me, it's kind of the same thing with wine. Like once it gets to a certain price, it it's I just think, stupid. I think they're just like, I don't know. It's like they're laundering money or something. <laughs> like oh, speaking of wine, you just reminded me of something. I watched uh the do- It's like a documentary movie. It's not really a. It's like a documentary. It's like a movie. It's the I Love Lucy documentary movie. I have no idea what you're talking about. Do you know who I Love Lucy is? I, Lucy, I've Lu- heard of the show. Lucia Never, Ball. Yeah, the black and white one. Yeah. Yeah. So that woman, who used to live in Vegas, by the way, yeah. is, she's an amazing woman. Incredibly smart. And I love her story. And anyway, so I downloaded that movie off of Amazon Prime, I think, and I watched it on the on the plane. Anyway, that's a really, that's a big recommend for me. I really like that movie. But anyway, there's an iconic scene. I'm wondering if you know, because you're like, how old are you? Like five? You're like five years old? Uh, six is <laughs> next month. <laughs> um, I got another story. But anyway, so. <laughs> you're just full of stories. Dude, I've been gone for two weeks, okay? Yeah. And uh, there's an iconic scene of uh, I, Lucy, Lucy goes to a, a winery in Italy. Okay. And she's stomping grapes in a big barrel. Okay. And she loses her earring in the grapes. Oh. It's, okay. it's part of the comedy scene. Have you never seen this? No. God. Okay, anyways, my other really fun story. Don't judge me today because I'm super fucking hungover, but I was at that that izakaya and with the dancing and singing. And I kept talking to everybody, but I kept kind of speaking to them like they were younger than me. Because you can kind of do that in Japanese. It's like a way to kind of understand that you're older. Yeah. And not, not, I don't mean not using Kago, but just there's like, you know, and because they're all in their 20s, right? And I'm just, I'm like 40. And they're like, anyway, they asked me, one of the guys, he's like, so how old are you? And I was just like, I think I was looking good that day, but just, you know, I was like, how old do I, th- do you think I am? He, he said 27 or 29 or something like that. And I was just like, thanks, let's just leave it. There. But they got really curious. And I was like, no, I'm 40. Because in Japan, I'm 40. Because it makes sense, right? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway. And I was like, I'm 40. And they're like, no. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, show me your ID. I got, I got, I had to show, and then in Vegas, I got carded three times. I've never been carded before. You, you never adulted in America. Yeah. I get carded three times. I, I even asked one of the ladies, I was like, sweetie, how old do you think I am? But in America, they are. If they, you look younger than 35 is the, the, the rule in Vegas. Oh, in Hawaii, I think they have to card you. Anytime you purchase alcohol. I love about Hawaii is that, it, it, especially in Honolulu and Waikiki, they have a cheat sheet next to all their cash registers with uh, all the, the Japanese, Japanese na- years. Yeah. With like um, like real normal people years. Right. <laughs> Why don't they write that on their password? Why does the hey say or show? Uh, why do they so, so dumb? I don't know. If you guys, I think all of our listeners probably know this, but if you guys don't, the years in Japan are counted by the emperor. Right. So now we're in the Reiwa Dewa years and so are you Showa? You're Showa, yeah, I'm Showa. Aren't you? Oh, I'm Heisei. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, asshole. <laughs> Whatever. Actually, you know, so I was uh let's just say I was in a dating app and like all these people were white writing like H one or like H something. And I was like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> and that's what it is, like Heisei yeah. one, Heisei three, or whatever. Yep. Anyway, I actually don't have no any idea how old that is. <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of, uh, what were, did you finish yours? Yeah, I did. Okay. So uh, we have Japan proposes four day work week to improve work life balance. The Japanese government is saying that some people, uh, some some positions could do a four hour work week, and their hope is that that will increase uh, health, mental health, and more importantly, uh, authorities hope the extra day off every week will encourage people to go out and spend, thereby boosting the economy. I got to tell you guys, I did a lot of boosting the Tokyo economy over those couple of days. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, employees, on the other hand, find the idea of a shorter working week appealing, but they, they do worry about reduced wages and accusations that they are not fully committed to their job. So, yeah. Well, I mean, if everybody is just more efficient at their job. More better. Yeah. If they everything. are more gooder. More gooder at everything. Yeah. Then, I mean, I think it can work. That works for certain industries. Yeah, that's true. That would not work for... Like, okay, so our Ake High School, for example, that we sell time. Yeah. So we have an interesting way of doing it. We, we take off long vacations throughout the year. And in order to do that, we have to, you know, make up that time. But I like that system. I mean, I made the system. I, of course, I like it. But if we took the Ake High School to a four-hour work week, we just have to increase staff. Four-day work week. Sorry, four-day. <laughs> That'd be fun, four-hour work week. <laughs> We'd have to double our staff. Yeah. And so if we double our staff, then, we, then what it said, we'd have to reduce the rate, the wages of current staff. Right. So 
Yeah, it doesn't work for all industries. I'm cool with shorter. Like you said, if you're really efficient, some people don't actually need to be there for 40 hours a week. Right. Right. So if you're really efficient, you just get all your work done. Fine, whatever. But, other, you know, some industries, it just doesn't work. But yeah, it's uh, there is Google did this big study. Yeah. And basically it was, you know, they I forgot how they did it. But basically the conclusion that they found this is Google. So they have no reason to lie about this. No matter how hard or how much overtime an employee puts in, their output is basically the same. Mm-hmm. Like employees basically have a cap to their output. So if you're working 40 hours versus 180 hours, you're kind of around. There's like there's like a kind of a soft cap on how much you can actually output. Right. So you know if you if you spend more work, time at work, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to do more work. That's what they came down to. Anyway, I was going to give you this this uh, this story, but I'm going to read it. Why are young Japanese people rejecting marriage? Hmm. Don't ask me. I got married. He got married the day I left. It's like I laughed and he's I, like, Fuck I'm pretty you. sure we planned that before you plan your vacation. So it's, it wasn't a vacation. I went home to be depressed. Yeah. <laughs> your vacation. But anyway, um, why are young Japanese people rejecting marriage at 37? This is a story about young people in Japan who, you know, basically in their thirties who aren't getting married like me. Like me. At 37, Sho says he's content. He has a job that pays enough for him to get by comfortably, has friends whom he sees regularly, a range of hobbies, and time to enjoy them. The one thing he does not have is a wife, and that's just fine by him. I mean, if he's happy with it, then I guess that's fine. According to the Cabinet Office's 2022 gender report, I'm sure you guys did a great job with that. I mean, (laughs) cynicism, 25.4% of women in their 30s and 26.5% of men in the same age group say that they do not want to get married. Slightly more than 19% of men in their 20s and 14% of women similarly had no plans to win. I think a lot of young people today lack social skills that has been made worse as a lot of families are only having one child now. So that child is growing up, not interacting or developing the social skills that he or she will need in life. Well, I'm kind of curious about like how uh, the pandemic, the situation has affected how much people want to get married because it uh, limited a lot of things in Japan, like, uh, obligatory drink parties and stuff with companies and stuff like that. So I think a lot of people found that they had a lot more free time to do the things that they wanted to do. So maybe a lot of people are just content with their free time now. So that might be it. But so there was actually like a, like a like pandemic boom of babies in a lot of countries, but Mm -hmm. actually births declined. (laughs) So there's the opposite happened here. So maybe you're right. Maybe people are just like, Nope, we're just going to be, on VR or whatever the hell they're doing. What do, what do the kids do now? I don't know. TikTok still? I don't know. Is that so cool? <laughs> Is that so cool? Let us know in the comments. Actually, anything, guys, anything that we talk about in the show, please comment about, you know, we love having the conversation with you guys. So yeah. I'm actually curious at how many people like have dysfunctional relationships with their parents. Cause I, I feel like when I talk to people, like I'm always the only one. Really? Yeah, because it's like, I mean, like everybody has like relationships. I'm like, I don't know. It's, it's like, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm. You have relationships, but they're just not like the same kind of relationships. No, I mean with, with my mom. Oh. <laughs> uh, st- speaking of, uh, uh, here we go. Uh, so boorish behavior and diet prompts d- uh, drive to elect more women. So basically this lady, her name is Amano. Miss Amano uh, was asked to speak to present her views on the diet based upon her experience with child care issues. And like when she was speaking, one of the male diet, the diet is the parliament basically of Japan. Uh, one of the male diet members said, will you keep it short? Ooh. Basically like, like, I don't know. It's like, yeah. And anyway, so now she was like, fuck you. And now they have a Twitter account and Instagram campaign calling women to get up and vote more women into the upper house election in July 10, huh. which I hope that they get what they want. Cause I think that that diet is full of a bunch of okay. man. It is crazy to watch that. The, the, the live feed from that. It's just like, wow. Like half the people are sleeping and it's literally a retirement home. Yeah. It's like uh, for men and like two, two women. And I'm like, you guys are only going to make all the great decisions. I mean, like I can't say much, but here's another great decision. Osaka, there has been so many great stories about courts. It's like we spent all of our car, our all of our like like our our, our what is it called, our, our saved up points 
on the 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 Johnny Depp Amber Hurt is that her name? Yep. It's trial. So we got Johnny back, but we lost you know women's rights, <laughs> Miranda rights, <laughs> gun control. I just everything's just like bam bam bam. So you know not to be outdone, Japan. <laughs> uh, they, so this basically like uh, there was a a suit a lawsuit where uh, people said that banning same sex marriage is unconstitutional, and the Osaka court ruled that uh, that it was not. Let's see. It says the ruling the, the ruling dealt a blow to gay couples and, and gay rights act activists after another district court in Sapporo ruled in 2021 that the failure to recognize same sex marriage was unconstitutional. So that was first, right? Mm. Then several areas, including oh, wait, wait, and then blah blah blah. It is, uh, and then it says. Uh, so Japan's ban on same sex marriage does not violate the constitution. A, a district court in Osaka then ruled. And it says here that uh, it's the only country in the G8 group uh, of developed nations that doesn't allow people to same-sex marry. Does that include the uh, partnership thing? So it says that in some places like Tokyo and stuff like that, they're they're allowing par partnership. I think we, we can do that here in Kagoshima as well. But that, is that the same? It's not technically a marriage, but it allows the couple to have some of the benefits of being married so it's not as good as being married obviously i mean is that kind of like you know you also have a drinking fountain oh um, <clears throat> you know you have a drinking fountain separate but equal i mean is that i mean is, is that what we're gonna accept mm, yeah i guess that's not good <laughs> no. you know and so uh, you know, it needs to be fixed legislatively. I mean, we in 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 America, the Supreme Court ruled it unconstitutional. Which, by the way, that might get overturned too. Thank God that we have a conservative Supreme Court. Um, and so it just changed the whole country over suddenly with like one ruling. Yeah. Um, and there was no legislation to make that happen. But in Japan, they they need to because the the, the court is not. I don't actually think the court is wrong. I think that the Constitution doesn't specifically protect anything like that so i think that it was just a strict re reading of the lines you know ruling um but again they just need to fix it legislatively they just need to pass uh legislation that allows same-sex marriage through that group of old men in a room sleeping yeah well that'll happen right <laughs> No, I just, I, it's just, you know, I can't believe we're still doing this stuff, you know, like issues that I felt that were decided and we figured out back in the nineties, like what, how are we still having not figured this out yet? It's just like, come on guys. Like, hi, who do you care? Who marries who? Mm. You know, I don't, it's, it's, if they're two, they're two consenting adults, who gives a shit? Yeah. You know, it's just whatever. And, you know, the thing is, in Japan, there's no actual, like, history of anti-gay or homophobic stuff. It's just not there. It's just there's no rule. There's no box for them to get married. That's all. So pff, weird. But anyway, I hung out in Nichome, right, for a couple of days because uh, I, I, one of my friend's cousins runs a bar there. It was just like, I don't know. I just like, they're the coolest people in the world. So much fun. Just great. Just so much fun. And, uh, you know, they all get separate but equal you know unions or whatever it's stupid anyway do you have anything fun or positive um not really <laughs> i do i do japan city loses memory drive with info to on all 406 uh, 4 460 000 residents this is hilarious memory drive yeah so this guy it's a usb drive so this guy i love this guy so this basically code funds and, and like you know uh application for code relief funds right for the entire city right of amagasaki this dude had all of these people's information on a thumb drive went to a bar got drunk passed out and lost it well that wouldn't have happened if he had them on floppy disks no people are saying that they should have faxed it <laughs> now now the it's this Hyogo, so Hyogo is all is a, is a mess. There's there's two prefectures, there's two places that are kind of a mess. One's Hyogo, the other one is uh, Kitakyushu. Those are the two like. Although Kitakyushu is apparently a, a a gourmet town, I didn't know that. I heard that recently. So, yeah, you just go and get all the good foods, and then also get maybe killed by the yakuza. But anyway, um, so the one saving grace is apparently the information is encrypted. Oh, okay. So they probably won't get access to it. And there's been no reports of it being leaked yet. 
do they have like spare copies or do they have the information oh, I don't saved know. anywhere else? I hope they do. <laughs> I hope they do. They all, they're going to have to have everybody reapply for it, which would be to- totally crazy. But anyway, so that's so that poor guy. Why did he take it with him drinking? I think it was in his bag. And I think what happened is I think he got a, a, he lost his bag where it got stolen or something. And then when he's telling the police what he had in his bag, he's like, oh, my God, I also have a USB drive from work. And then this just blew up all over the news. It's been all over the news. <sighs> and the funny thing is, is that your boss at the Aikawa school, my VP, sh- that guy is her- went to the same school as her at the same age. Really? Yeah. So isn't that fucking hilarious? Huh. What a quinkadink. Quinkadink. 30% of students in third year of junior high have poor eyesight. So first of all, how is your eyesight? Okay. So before I came to Japan, yep. perfect. Perfect. It's perfect. 2020. Okay, that's that was one thing I want to ask about. In uh, in America, we say 2020. I don't really understand the Japanese. System. I think it's one is good. <laughs> is one good? I don't remember. Or I, is I, two good? It may, maybe it's two, and they just took off a zero. That's, it's, that's what I thought it was. Two point something. Yeah, it's two point. I think. Whatever. They have a different system. Okay. But and they also their eye seeing test is really cute. Like you basically, it's like a, if you can think of for those of you listening, you you think of a C, and it. I don't know if you've ever seen this. It's basically the C, the opening of the C is either up, down, left, or right. And so you tell... Or diagonal. Or diagonal. I've never had that before, but that sounds fun. And then so you just just tell them, ue, shita, shita, ue, migi. Yeah. Or you... Actually, they say that you just have to point with your finger, which direction. Yeah. But I I didn't know that the first time I took an eye test in Tokyo. So I looked, I'm like the fuck am I supposed to say? <laughs> like, like instructions are clear. <laughs> yeah. Cause I actually, I've never, I never had an eye test before that. I never had an eye test in America. You didn't go to school. They eye test you in America. I don't think they did. Man. Did you go? Did, are you from America? I'm in that, like the DLC America, the DLC, <laughs> the Island, <laughs> the one that came later. Yeah. But, uh, no, they, in, anyway, in my elementary school, they, they, uh, they check both your, your ears and they check your eyes. Maybe they did. Maybe I just forgot. But anyways, uh, almost 30% of third year junior high school students have, I say under 0.3 in Japan. So they had a test, I guess on June 23rd. And uh, somebody says, I believe a major factor in the decline in the student's eyesight is the habit they have developed since they were infants of watching anime or playing games on smartphones or other devices, said Noriyuki Azuma, president of the Japanese Association of Pediatric uh, Word that I should probably be able to say that I cannot. Oh, yeah. What is that? (laughs) Jesus. Uh, Off... Thermal, thermology, ophthalmology. Optim- uh, it's an ophthalmologist. Yeah, what is it? Ophthalmologist. I know ophthalmologist, but that ophthalmology. Was, but there were extra letters in there. That, I, <laughs> anyways, so some guy who Dude, specializes do, in children's eyes. I don't do like hardcore sciencey Latin words. When you see, oh, do chemical words. I'm like, yeah, good, whatever. So yeah, so it's basically the story is about kids who. Yeah, it says that like uh, they have the same tests every year, and it says that the first year. Uh, students have decent eyesight but then by the time it reaches third year the the number of people who pass the test drops to like a fourth so okay so one of the recommendations that the these doctors talked about is like that the kids should exercise their eyes and looking far away yeah so before i came to japan i had perfect vision and then the the entire time i've been living here i've been noticing that my vision is getting worse that might be because I'm getting older, but it also might just be because I never look far away at things. Right. So anytime I, like when I was in America for a week, right, I just remember thinking, wow, it's so far. Yeah. Everything. Like the, the you know, the, the drawing distance is very far in America. Yeah. How far they're rendering it. Yeah. The re- it renders all the way to the end. Yeah. But like in Japan, you either get ocean, which yeah. is like, you know, it's like the invisible wall in the video game. You can't go past it. Right. Or what do they, what do they do in video games? When it's like they either put ocean out there and you like fatigue you to death. Yeah. Or they like shark you or something. You know, there's always some gimmicky. Right. I was kind of disappointed in Breath of the Wild where they actually, there is a part where it's like, you cannot go any further. Is there? Yeah. In the Gerudo Valley or whatever it is. The, uh, the desert place. Oh, is it something like it's too hot or something like that? No, it just tells you, you cannot go past this point. It just straight tells you. It's oh. like, nope. 
I don't remember that. There was a 90s game like called Excite Bike or something like that. I forgot what it was called. It was a dirt bike game and yeah. they had the most hilarious way of doing like the invisible walls around your 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 sandbox. You would drive away from the map, right? So off map. And what they would do is they would like explode you back onto the map. Okay. Like they would just like like your bike would be violently thrown up in the air and like all the way back to where you're supposed to be on the map. And it was hilarious. Why are we talking about this? All right, vision. So in America, I'm like looking all the way out of, because Vegas is like desert, so just flat and there's mountains at the end of it. Yeah. And I'm just like, wow, it's so big. And I'm like, I'm looking far away. But in Japan, you're either looking at buildings everywhere. Yeah. So I'm only ever looking about 20 meters or less. I've never really thought about that. But yeah, now that you mention it, in Hawaii, we can see for miles and miles. There's nothing in America I mean, compared to like Japan. There's not like big buildings everywhere. Yeah. Right. And so like you, just, I mean, every now and then you'll get it to a rooftop and you'll be able to see far. But for the most part, you're just always looking at something within 20 meters of you. Hmm, I've never thought about that. So yeah. So my eyes just, I, can't, I don't have any more, uh, what do you call it? Far, far, far seeing ability. <laughs> <laughs> I know words. English speaking. <laughs> and actually, the, you know how I f found out that I have bad eyesight? One of our students who owns the eyeglass shop in yeah. Temonkan, which you guys, it's called Adago. If you ever come to Temonkan, it's really cool. He translated his eye test into English by himself and he wanted me to check it. So I came into his shop and he's like, okay, I'm going to do it just like I'm supposed to do it. And I'm going to do it all in English. Just tell me if I make any mistakes. I was like, okay. And I do the whole test with him and everything. I was like, dude, you did it perfectly. Your English was perfect. And he's like, great. By the way, you need glasses. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? I have perfect eyesight. And he's like, nope, go out. And he took me outside and he pointed at a tree really far away. And he's like, look at that tree. And I said, okay. He's like, look at the leaves. And I said, okay. And he gave me, you know how they put the, the temporary lenses in the glasses, the yeah. frames for just you to try. And he put those on. He's like, now look at the leaves. And I was like, wow, I can see the leaves now. <laughs> he raised the, uh, what do you call it? The graphics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, you know, he went to ultra high detail. Yeah. And so I was just like, oh, cool. And then and then I got glasses. So, But then I left my glasses on my car and then they got destroyed. And so I haven't had glasses since then. Oh. And I'm, I don't need legally to drive yet, but I'm almost there. So, okay. Uh, go to your second story and then I'll just like go through mine. Feature, Japan kids learn financial education as cashless society takes hold. So basically a school uh, played this card game with uh, fifth graders at an elementary school in Yokohama uh, where the students were divided into groups and then they had to determine which was more valuable, an object or a behavior from randomly uh, picked cards. And it would be things like an hour of care for a sick person and a color pencil and say like which one is more valuable to you and i guess the purpose of this game was to try and like teach kids the value of money other than like it also says in uh in the experiment that with young children they showed them like a big bag full of one yen coins and then like a hundred dollar bill and they're like which one do you think is worth more and obviously all the kids are like whoa this big sack of coins it was worth like probably like five bucks or something. But yeah, I mean, I think this is a good idea to uh, teach kids finances more. Like at least for me in my school, they didn't ever really teach us anything about finances. Like I didn't learn anything about taxes or how to manage money or anything. Financial lit literacy has been proposed as a core uh, subject for a decade or more now. And uh, yeah, in, in American schools, I, I do know that they do this in other countries, but in American schools, they don't have that. And so it's good to see them introducing it into Japan. Yeah. I will, I always shit on the Japanese education system because their English education is so shit. Mm. But there are other subjects, things that I like about the Japanese education system, doing math is really good. And that's actually... It's actually a product of their language than yeah. it is any... Yeah, a lot of Asian languages. Yeah, they do really well in math because... And it's not racist. It's just that the language conforms itself really well to math, where English does not. Um, so math is taught really well. Literacy is taught really well. I think their literacy rate is something like 100% in Japan. It's like nearly 100%. Yeah, something like that. Um, the fact that they have moral classes, morality class... Moral education. That is cool. 
And that is something we desperately need in the States. What do they do in that class? Like, I, I'm actually not really sure what that class so is. It depends on the school, but, you know, they'll they'll tell stories about things. Like, they. That's I think that's where they learn about, like, Martin Luther King and stuff like that. And then they just, they talk about like, you know, just being a bro. Don't, don't be a dick. And then they also talk about how to treat each other and just stuff like that, you know, just basic stuff like that. Um, but it's, th- that's good. And then, you know, the other things that they do is they teach them how to be responsible because the kids clean the school. Right. You know, they, they, they make food for each other. Right. They don't have custodians or. Yeah. I mean, they do, but not like America, you know. Right. So stuff like that, I think they do, they do really well. So I think having a financial literacy uh, class will be good. Okay, uh, let's go on. I got three more stories really quickly. Actually, I'm, I don't care. The Toyota recalls uh, first mass-produced EVs in less than two months after launch, and everybody's thinking, oh my God, their EVs must have something wrong. No, it's a bu- it's like a bolt in the tire. But I do want to point out the name of this thing. This is the most Japanese Toyota-ish name. The name of this thing is called the BZ4X. BZ4X. Just rolls off the tongue and really easy to remember. Uh, let's see. High court. Uh, this one's kind of shitty. High court rejects uh, paternity harassment allegations by Canadian man. Basically, this guy went on a paternity leave and then he came back to work and uh, his, according to him, uh, his company, which was a Japanese company, uh, would like exclude him from meetings, took away his responsibilities. Uh, so they did the Japanese firing. And then they eventually fired him for, this is what, so his lawyer, this is a lawyer talking. Okay. Uh, his lawyer, one of Wood's lawyers, uh, <laughs> said the case uh, still could be contested on... Ver- uh, he lost this case, by the way. But he said it st- stood, still could be contested contested on various grounds, including Wood's dismissal for having complained about harassment. That would potentially violate the right of workers to bring up harassment, he said. Hmm. So this has a name. It's called Pat- Patahara, Paternity Harassment. Again, this this is something that I've had, I've had to deal with as a business owner. Like when my workers became fathers. Yeah. I I, I think Hayato was the first one, I think, to do it. And I was just like, hi. And he's like, hi. I was like, so you're having a baby. He's like, I'm having a baby. I was like, what do you want to do? Because <laughs> like, I had no idea. Yeah. I was like, he's like, well, you know, I, just, I think he asked for like a couple of days off or something like that. I was like, whatever. Just do you. Yeah. You know, um, we did have one problem with the next father, but that was because he committed to doing something that he didn't actually commit to. That was a problem. Uh, and uh, I learned my lesson that if somebody is scheduled to be have a, have a baby, that, that person will not have anything that's important to be done around the time of the birth. Right. So that was my lesson learned. Uh, but aside from that, like I've always just been like, what do you want to do? <laughs> And we have maternity leave, obviously, because two of our fucking staff are going away within uh, a month of within each a other. Month of each other. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so great. No, I'm actually very happy for both of them. Yeah. But it's just, it's just help me find new staff. Yeah. Okay. So, what's your email again? How many emails have you gotten now? I've gotten a lot. I've gotten a lot. I'm not gonna lie. I, there's a lot of people that are just like. And the thing is, you guys. I, so, if you guys weren't following I, a couple shows ago, I, I just like shouted out, it's like, we're hiring. So, send me your your resumes. I've gotten resumes from people that have nothing to do with education. They're like, I've been doing this job for 20 years and I'm just fucking done with it. And I just want to leave. I'm just like, Oh man. Um, but anyway, uh, a few positions guys, I don't have many positions, but I, I am pirate still. Uh, last story, Japan's top court orders Twitter to delete posts on man's uh, past arrest. Basically somebody posted on Twitter that this guy had gotten arrested five, uh, eight years ago. And I wanted to bring up something that this 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 uh, case kind of touches on. <clears throat> but anyway, it says the court. It says Japan's top court on Friday overturned a lower court's ruling that the dismiss the dismiss a man's demand that Twitter incorporated delete posts showing him his arrest history, uh, ordering the U.S. social networking service to remove 14 tweets. So Twitter has to remove these 14 tweets from other people. Okay, that has his arrest on there because he doesn't want to have his past constantly brought up on Twitter. Right. It says the, the court also noted that approximately eight years had elapsed since the man's arrest and the high court, blah, 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 stating that his punishment was no longer in effect and that he, the incident had become less relevant in terms of public interest. Now, here's the thing that I want to bring up. Did you know, do do you know what libel is? Liable. Libel. Libel. Libel is like when you sue someone for, uh, for like, for example, if you, you know, uh, if you, 
like politicians and like a lot of celebrities and stuff like that there i don't i don't think this applies to them but if i like make up a bunch of bullshit about you and post it online and ruin your image you can sue me right like a defamation kind of thing yeah yeah defamation yeah in japan they also have rules laws like that but here's the fun thing you can actually sue somebody for defamation even if what they said about you is true okay so here's an example Let's say that you know that somebody's husband is cheating and it's true. Okay. And you make that known to hurt the, the image of the, of the cheating husband. Right. He can sue you for defamation, even though it's true. Hmm. Isn't that funny? So what's the law in America then? So it has to be like untrue. Huh. So, you know, basically everything Alex Jones has ever done with his life is defamation. <laughs> Okay. I think he believes in like crab people who are secretly living in the earth and that they are controlling everything. Have you ever watched his podcast with Joe Rogan? No, I haven't. I think it's been deleted. Maybe it's on Spotify. Just get a beer and watch that four hour epic train wreck. I think there's two of them. Okay. It has like 400 million views. I don't think I watched it. I I, I think I know who you're talking about. You don't know who Alex Jones is? I think I do know who you're talking the, about. The angry but... man that, that, you know. Is, is he kind of like a larger white man aren't they all <laughs> <laughs> um he yeah i think he used to play like football or something like that but he currently uh it was sandy hook i think it was that mm-hmm. he he started the whole like oh they're crisis actors and he got sued and lost hard mm-hmm. he had to bankrupt and everything fuck that guy but anyway, uh, yeah, so you, it has to be fake. You can't just like, because if the news reports on something that you've done and you've done it right in America, that's fine. In Japan, that could open them to libel to, to, to you know, to be sued. So couldn't you just like sue every news, like what do you call it? Newspaper and so I, news the, channel. So I think that the, the stipulation is I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. This is an entertainment show. Do not take me seriously. But I think what it is, I think if it's a news organization and they're like, that's their job, that's fine. But if you're just some guy and this is, this is exploding with social media. Mm-hmm. If you're just some guy and you make a, your, your, your mission to campaign against somebody else, then that's defamation. So if you're going to do that, then you have to like start your own website. Fox News. Yeah. And then. Infowars. Yeah. <laughs> I think I just said all those words that YouTube does not like. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Uh, yeah. So I just want to make sure that you guys know that. Again, not legal advice. Just an entertainment show. But remember, if you're in Japan, do not post or say or do anything to, to you know. Well, they're also... Uh, isn't it also illegal now in Japan to even like cyber bully? Yeah. I mean, that that's harassment on, on, on the whole is, you know, you can be sued for it or you can go to jail for it or some levels of it and stuff like that. But, but they're like recently, cracking down yeah. on it. But I don't think that they're, I don't know if they're doing a great job with that. I think it's just more like somebody, some lawmaker thought that would be a good idea, but they haven't figured out how to implement it or anything. But yeah, there are, there, there are more uh, cases of that in the news now. Right. But that is a huge thing, you know, because when you got social media out there, this is why I don't recommend you guys let your kids be on social media until they're adults because, Jesus, that's just, you, no one needs that. But, um, yeah, um, it's uh, it's the new problem, right? Like, because you can really, I, there's stories of, from America, for example, where kids have moved sc- states mm-hmm. and the, the bullies get, get to their social media still, you know, and so, yeah, I don't know. But anyway. Uh, just be be aware of that. And the reason why I know that is, it, what's that dude? Somebody in Japan, what's his name? He's got like a bajillion followers. His name is Paolo from Tokyo. Oh, yeah. I've seen his channel before. Yeah, I mean, he comes up all the time because, yeah. you know, all the keywords that we have the same. Right. And anyway, he's like, things that you, that, that, you, that, I can't, that you can't believe are illegal in Japan or something like mm. that. And that was one of the things. And I was like, oh, yeah, that is right. I heard that somewhere. And so, yeah. But anyway, uh, that's been our show today, guys. I got to go eat dinner. I know y'all needed to know that. So things that I would like comments on today. One, do you have a dysfunctional family? And if you do, let's go get a beer together. No, I'm serious. Like if, you know, tell me your story. I'm curious. I am curious. Two, are you planning on, on traveling to Japan? And if so, when? Three, can you see far away? <laughs> 
what other controversial things that we talk about today a oh, gay marriage when do you think gay marriage is going to happen in japan a year after it's Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> or anything else that we talked about guys just leave us a comment well you know open the discussion in the comments i mean i do uh, you know we always say that youtube comments are like a dumpster fire our comments are good they're all great Every now and then we get like porn spam, but for, aside from yeah. that stuff, <laughs> like <laughs> our true. comments are great. So I love it. Um, anyway. All right, guys, that's been our show today. Thank you very much. And uh, welcome back. To, I keep, I keep like telling people that when I got home, cause I got home by myself, I like, you know, in Japan, you say tadaima and they say, okay, to you. I just like yeah. got in my house. I was like, tadaima. And then I went, okay. No, you hear it. I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. Dude. I've accidentally like activated Google so many times so many times it's like i was actually worried that because i had people come over and sit in my house when i had deliveries and stuff i actually worried that they weren't gonna be able to use my house because like everything is automated and so yeah but uh my house was still there when i came back and everything was fine oh and and oh, we'll talk about this next show but i i brought my memory box contents yeah from las vegas because i didn't know if i was ever going to see my mom's house again or the stuff inside of it mm-hmm back with me and i told this to you before this is a one more travel story okay i told this to you before i left uh, america checked in luggage is weight checked uh yep carry on luggage is not weight checked which is so stupid so i put all the heavy so all the papers and photos and it was like 50 kilograms in my carry on bag that sounds terrible and it was totally okay <laughs> <laughs> so i got two giant check-in bags yeah right because because i only went with one check-in bag and one carry-on and i could have shipped the box the contents of the box to myself back in japan but the cost of that is the same cost of just buying a samsonite bag from ross so it was a hundred dollars mm. and so i just did that because like international travel allows two check-in bags for the most part right so i just did that and so i just came back with all of my stuff and a lot of toothpaste yeah, thanks for the toothpaste. A lot of toothpaste. But anyway, so those those photos that I had, I found more photos of my first trip to Japan. Yeah. And so I'm going to put those up on Instagram and stuff. But there's, oh, there's so many photos that I'm just like, I think if I find any fun ones, I'll bring them and we'll put them on the show. But yeah, that was, that was a, not It was very um, nostalgic. nostalgic to sit there and go through. Because I had to like kind of weed out the stuff that I didn't need to bring because it weight constrictions. But right. <laughs> it was cool. Anyway, that's been our show today. Leave us a comment, like, subscribe. Hey, hey, outro. Oh, you have to edit it. Yeah, because you're not over there. Yep. Cool. Why don't you just parsec in? Like, you bring your laptop and just do everything from here. I guess I could do that. I haven't right? thought of that. Just parsec into the tower over there. Oh, that's a good idea. I might do that next time. Yeah, let's do that next time. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.